Hi everyone and welcome back on board Costa Toscana, the huge flagship from Costa Cruises. Now this is episode 2 in this series. In our last episode we showed you what it was like to board one of the biggest cruise ships in the world in Barcelona. Laura showed off how much bigger her balcony cabin was than mine and how much better the view was. We explored every inch of both of our cabins. Yeah, that's right, every inch. We then showed you all the paperwork that you receive on a Costa Cruise before teaching you how to make the perfect cocktail. Anyway, we've just arrived at our first port of call and we can't wait to show you around. Morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Now today we're docked in Sardinia. So yeah, we're gonna take you off the ship and show you what it's like when you visit here by cruise. Now today's a bit of a funny one to the point where I'm not totally sure what we're going to get up to. Now that's for a couple of reasons. Now, number one, we had wanted to do an excursion to go to the beach because as you may or may not know, the beaches in Sardinia are meant to be absolutely beautiful. So we were hoping to head along to the beach, but unfortunately there weren't any excursions in our language and the language that was available, there was only one seat left. So yeah, that wasn't going to, <laughs> wasn't going to go very well. So yeah, that's one thing that you need to think about is that if you are coming on a Costa Cruise, you need to make sure that if you do speak a language which is considered to be a minority language, for example, English, you just need to remember that you might not necessarily have excursions available in every port. And if you do, they might book up relatively quickly. So always bear that in mind because that's caught me off guard in comparison to some of the bigger, for example, American lines where pretty much every excursion would be in English. So yeah, one to think about. Now, the position that leaves us in, we are docked about three miles away from the beach that the excursion would take us to. So if I was a betting man, I would probably put my money on the fact that we'll be taking you to that beach today. We'll probably do it by bus or we'll do it by taxi. We need to, to be honest, get together over breakfast and Google to find out how to get there and to figure out what to do today. So I guess, look, what we don't need to do is remain in this cabin with me chatting to you. Let's get along the corridor, go and pick up Laura and head down for breakfast. But just before we do, if you find this video useful and if you enjoy watching along, then it would be amazing if you could give the video a thumbs up, which you can do just beneath. And while you're down there, if you think about subscribing to the channel as well, that would be brilliant. But look, let's get off the ship, or well, let's get along the corridor, go for breakfast, get off the ship, and yeah, then bring you back and show you what's on offer here on Costa Toscana. Okay, breakfast done. You've I just, feel like I should lean forward. Yeah. <laughs> You've just been a little bit repulsed by my breakfast offer, which I wasn't overly impressed with. Red onion. Yeah, red, red on a plate of red Pre onion. Pre nine a.m. What sort of an animal <laughs> has red onion pre 9am? With cheese, so <laughs> I... Also, I'm going to put moment, a picture of it on now. <laughs> soft cheese, no bread. Just yeah. soft cheese. A delight, <laughs> an absolute delight. So anyway, as you can see, I have managed to pick Laura up. Um, we've had breakfast and we are now getting ready to get off of the ship. So when I last spoke to you guys, we weren't sure what we were planning to do, but I think, I think, We've maybe figured it out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into a beach, Poeto. Yep, which is the one that we were hoping to go to on the excursion, but it looks close. It, well, according to Fraser, it's three miles away. Um, he navigated us around Barcelona, so hopefully... I mean, these the guys know how strong my navigation can be <laughs> at times. But Google says 2.9 miles or kilometres, so it's either way, hopefully pretty close. Doable. And it's meant to be absolutely beautiful, so... There's a slight chance that everybody on this cruise ship will also be there. I think, rather than a slight chance, there's a very, <laughs> very high chance. The ship feels quiet. I'll, we'll flip the camera and show you where we are now, but there is pretty much no one here. Yeah, it's very quiet. The buffet was manageable. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, look, let's cut here. I'm waiting for a bottle of water to come over, and then as soon as that arrives, we are good to go. Hopefully off the ship, onto the shuttle to the city, and then down to the beach.
we're out. Oh, hello. Let's go to the beach. So we have been dropped off at a place called Malibu, which apparently is the best beach here. So let's avoid getting run over by a car or a bike and check it out. But if you don't want to tell me now, I guess I'll never know. It's not warm. It's not warm. Right, as you can see, we got out the taxi and walked for, how far away are we? Like half a kilometre? Yeah, a very, that. very small amount. And it's gone so quiet, yet again. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, we literally got dropped off at that Malibu place, turned left, walked up, along the water, and we are probably joined by about 50 people. Let's see if it stays like that, because I think everyone will be coming off of the cruise ship now. But yeah, what's our plan for... What is our plan for today? I intend, I read a whole book yesterday. I intend to read a whole book again today. Um, so there'll be limited, limited conversation. Limited about. conversation. <laughs> the, I intend to go for a swim in the sea, which will flip this round after, let's say we, the Royal We, Fraser will flip this round afterwards and show you the view, which is pretty Stunning. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, Sardinia coastline, we're on the south, south of the island. There's, do you know what is surprising actually? A lot of waves, people surfing. I yeah. was expecting it to be flatter, so. And the water's cleaner than I expected. It's very caribbean -y, isn't it? Yeah, oh, someone just wiped out on a surfboard there. <laughs> that, that was going to hurt. There's also a lot of sails. No, thank you. There's a lot. No, thank you. There's a lot of sails going on here as well. So yeah. at the moment, we could buy buckets There's a spades, man there in a kayak. Bracelets, a hats. full kayak. Which we could probably buy from one of these other men. Have you seen that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if you're into water sports, there's a lot of options. Yeah. Paddle boards, kayaks, surfing, bodyboard. Or if you're anything like me, you can just wail out on the beach for a few hours, which is exactly what I am going to do. So yeah, let's cut the camera. As Laura says, we'll spin it around and show you. Try and spot the man with the kayak. There's two actually. <laughs> we will check in with you guys in a couple of hours when we have, yeah, seen a little bit more of the sun. See you in a bit. Okay, so we've just spent the last, what, three hours-ish just chilling here. This beach honestly has been amazing. So Laura's just gone ahead because we're trying to find a snack on the way back. Now, when we were in the taxi coming here, the taxi driver actually said to us, oh, if we exchange numbers, I can bring you back. So actually, he's messaged Laura and we've, arra we've arranged to go back to where we got dropped off and we're hoping that he should be there about two o'clock. So. That's worked really, really well. Now, for us to take an excursion to here, it was going to cost, what was it, 15 euros return each on a bus. But for the luxury of a taxi, just the two of us, nice car, nice driver, it cost, what, 20 each way? So, a little bit more expensive to do it on your own in this example, but we both agree it, it's a lot comfier and actually a lot more luxurious to return at your own time. The only thing to watch is that Obviously, the ship won't wait for you if for whatever reason you're late, which is why we are leaving pretty early. Now, plan from here, we're hoping that we'll find a snack and a toilet just in here. So, um, yeah, we're going to go in, head down, get the taxi, and then go back to the ship for lunch because the buffet on there closes at four. So, hopefully, we'll check in with you guys when we get back on board Toscana and, yeah, get a bite to eat.
Okay, we are now back on the ship. It's what, four? Oh, it's pretty much four o'clock. It's exactly. all aboard now. So, all aboard today on the front of the Elgare Bordo, which you guys will know that I have showed you many times before. But all aboard 4 pm, which means that we will sail away at 4 30. Now, where we are sitting, have you seen anyone running yet? No, I'm hopeful. I'm watching like a hawk <laughs> to see someone sprinting down the, the port. Yeah, so where we're sitting, you can basically see where the shuttle bus drops you off from the front of the port. So we're hoping at some point to see somebody running to try and get onto the ship. But I'm also, we're actually sitting in a main thoroughfare right now. So yeah, it's pretty busy. Plenty of people walking behind. Um, anyway, our plan now, what, what are we doing? Um, <laughs> to be honest, not, <laughs> not, a, lot. not a fat lot. Um, <laughs> we need to shower at some point, get ready for dinner. Yeah, which we'll tell you guys about in a bit, but tonight is the first night that we're going to be trying speciality dining on here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go down to Teppanyaki. My first ever Teppanyaki. Yeah, oh, your first ever, that's ever, right. Ever, yeah. not just on a ship. So, and the sun is coming out now. It's very, very bright. <laughs> so, we're going to do teppanyaki. Before that, we're going to do the show. And yeah, we're going to use the show, I guess, as like a venue for like just a pre drink before dinner, which should be really nice. So, I think it's more acrobats tonight that mm -hmm. are on there. Um, but yeah, I think all that all that's left to say is that we'll let you see what it looks like to sail out of Sardinia. And we'll catch up with you very briefly before we head down to dinner. Okay, slight issue. Now, I am back in the room ready to go out and I think this afternoon I must have got completely distracted by the ocean and, <laughs> oh my goodness, I forgot to put any sun cream on my back. So I am, if I could show you I would, but I can't because I think YouTube will probably ban my video. So yeah, I at the moment am a little bit tender and a little bit fragile. So. Yeah, I'm going to have to put even more after sun on before we head out tonight, that is for sure. Now, to wrap up today, now, that beach that we went to today was absolutely excellent. Prior to leaving the ship, we both said, oh, like, what if it's a complete tourist trap? What if you get there and it's buses and buses and buses of people and it feels like a rip-off? Do you know what? It really didn't. The only thing I would say is that everywhere on that beach... People are walking up and down all the time trying to get you to buy things, which I honestly have never ever seen that before. But we counted up, we realised after we'd been there for all of five minutes, this is going to be a problem today. And we decided to make a tally of how many times we'd be asked to buy something. Now, I said, right, it'll be something stupid like 12 times. Laura said it'll be 26 times. And I thought, well, it can't possibly be that many. Like, come on. Anyway, it was 24 times, so on 24 separate occasions, someone came up to us to get us to buy a lilo, a scarf, a shawl, sunglasses, hats, buckets and spades, balls, and anything you could imagine. Jewellery, if you could imagine it strapped onto a board or tied onto someone's head, it was offered to us while trying to sunbathe. So, yeah, just, just be aware that if you go there, yes, it's beautiful, but... Yeah, you could buy pretty much anything. So 
definitely just be aware of that. Now, anyway, the plan for tonight is, I'm so excited for this, so tonight is my first experience dining in a speciality dining restaurant on board a Costa ship. Now, that doesn't include the pizzeria, because as you guys will know, if you follow me elsewhere, for example, on Instagram, you'll know that I absolutely love the pizzeria on a Costa ship, so we will be going there later in this cruise, but tonight is one of the we'll say actual restaurant, it's like one of the kind of the proper venues that you go into. So we've opted for like a two dinner or a two meal package. There's a whole host of different packages that you can go for on a Costa Cruise, which I will do a separate dining guide to walk you through. But you can basically, you can go for a seven dinner package, a three dinner package. We've just gone for the two because we only wanted to go to these two restaurants. Now, one of them is called Arpale, Ar Archipelago, or Ar Archipelago, it's a nightmare to pronounce anyway, but that's the restaurant that's basically themed around three different Michelin starred restaurant uh, chefs. So we're going to go to that the night that we leave Genoa, so that's going to be in three nights time I think from here. Now the plan for tonight is that we're booked in for Teppanyaki, which Teppanyaki is now growing in popularity on cruise ships. And I most recently did that on MSC World Europa when I was coming back from Dubai. So I'm really intrigued to see how Costa do it. And the thing that I'm most intrigued about is, to be honest, it's the language barrier because Teppanyaki is all about, it's about the show, yes, but it's all about the banter and the personality of the chef who's in that middle section. So I'm really intrigued to see how that is going to work. And if that's conducted in English because we speak English, or if it will be in Italian with a translator, or I don't really know. I don't really know how it's going to work. I'm really, really fascinated by it. So that's the plan for tonight. Now, for those two meals, that's cost us €85. Euros. So to be honest, that could be much, much worse. So watch this space. I won't come back on tonight because I'm going to have a few glasses of wine with dinner. And yeah. No one needs to have me talking a lot of nonsense after wine. So I'm going to cut you here. But what I will do is I will show you the venue, I'll show you the food, and I'll do a voiceover from here to talk you through kind of what we're eating and how we found the experience. So yeah, I need to head along and get Laura, who's currently in the process of getting ready along in her room. But just before I go, the final word for me is really just to say a massive thank you for following along. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing a day in Sardinia. I've enjoyed it, I'm not enjoying the aftermath of it, but I did have a fantastic day today. So if you have enjoyed it, it would be amazing if you could give the video a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to come along on the journey, then it would be amazing to have you along too. So just click subscribe, totally free to do. And then that'll be you. You'll be notified when my new videos go live. But look, I'm gonna head along get Laura and I'll see all of you guys down in Teppanyaki. But from me, thank you so much and I'll catch up with you all in my next video. So we headed down to check out the show to use that as a pre-dinner drinks venue. Now that sounds great on paper. However, when you actually head down and look at these venues, you very quickly realize that uh, they don't have the best design. Now we'll tell you more about this in a future video, but here's Laura trying to watch the acrobats around the side of yet another pillar that is almost completely blocking the view of the stage. But look, we'll tell you more about that another time. As you know, we ate at the Teppanyaki restaurant tonight. Now, Teppanyaki can sometimes be a little bit of a novelty, a little bit of a gimmick, but both of us agreed that the food that we had in here tonight was absolutely excellent. Now, everything was viewed using this QR code, and then you would just order your meal from the waiter or the waitress as they walked around. Now all of the food you're seeing here, everything that we ate, some of it was pre-prepared and then after we got through these courses, they then moved on to performing and cooking in the middle of the table. Now for those of you wondering about the language issue that we mentioned upstairs, I'm delighted to report that the majority of things tonight were served and conducted in English. So we had absolutely no issues at all. Now, a lot of teppanyaki is all about the theatre, so yeah, I, I don't know if you were Italian or if you were German, if you would be seated elsewhere, 
but certainly as an English speaker, we loved our experience in here. Now you can see the food that's on the grill is all really good quality. You can choose from either a meat main course or a seafood sea uh, main course. So Laura opted for meat. I opted for the lobster and whatnot that you can see on the grill a second ago. And yeah, both menu options fared really, really well. And we were really, really pleased. So yeah, look, hopefully you've enjoyed a little look at yet another port of call on our Costa Toscana cruise. That brings us to the end of the episode today. So yeah, if you have enjoyed it, stick around for more because in our next episode, we're taking you to one of the oldest and one of the most remarkable cities in the world. That is Rome. Now, as you can see here, <laughs> it was warm. So come along, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in our next episode. But for now, thank you so much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.